Welcome back to another episode of Christmas Card Talk, a podcast where we spend just a little bit of time talking about Christmas cards in Lord of the Rings card game. I'm your host, Davy Claus. And I'm Grant Thompson, giving out gifts this Christmas. <laughs> and I'm Ted Elf, and I love talking about presents. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. On today's episode, yeah, we're going to talk about <laughs> presents and giving and jolliness and uh, the uh, added benefit of the, um, of the of the of the YouTubers and people who watch our our video uh, version of this, not just the audio one. We'll get the added benefit of uh, Dave's lovely festive uh, holiday attire, including your chemistry Christmas sweater. Yeah. It's, uh, oh chemistry, oh chemistry. Yeah, that's right. He's that cool, everybody. Did you, did you call me fat and cool? <sighs> I said he's that cool. Oh, now, because now that you said that, because I am fat and cool, much like the card we're going to talk about. But before we talk about the <laughs> card, let's just really quickly thank our patrons. Thank you to all the patrons who, at the end of the year here, help keep us help us keep the lights on. We have um, new patron Jessica, and then we have Martina, Thardir, Stephen, Mark, Jason, Ryan, Manuel, Katie, Rachel, Tony, Valentin, uh, Eric, Dern's father, Moritz, Anders, Shane, Micah, Chris, Reagan, Rob, Brandon, Scott, Joe, Peter, Niall, Carl, Vardane, James, Joshua, Matt, Justin, Kideon, Bob, Daniel, Bob, David, Sean, Lou, Phil, Joseph, and Dominic. So wow, that well, you just dropped a, a patron bomb on us. I did. Yeah. Yes, that's what I try to do. And for anybody who is interested in, instead of hearing or seeing what we have to write, uh, have what to say, you can go to our blog and see what Matt has to say over there. Sometimes maybe you don't even agree with what Ted says. He's so controversial all the time, but. Um, you know, you can go over to the blog. You can find that at cardtalk2018.com. If you're interested in becoming a patron, that's also down here. You can find that at patreon.com slash cardtalk2018. But here we are at the end of 2021. At times, it feels like we weren't ever going to get here. But, you know, we have now have a tradition to do some sort of holiday card at the end of our season and this is the end of our fourth season here so let's see at the end of season one grant and i just did spirit theta and, and it was by mistake and then um at the end of season two we did uh christmas tree beard and then <laughs> last year we did the end comes for all sorts of crazy reasons because the end was coming it felt like and then this year, Grant, what is our holiday card? Well, to continue the parting gifts, it is the old reliable bomber. The guy who the guy who likes a feast just as well as I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is the eight cost, zero willpower, one attack, two defense, five hit point dwarf. When counting the number of dwarf characters you control, Bomba counts as two. <laughs> and just and that's ideally how many seats I generally take up. <laughs> we were talking about this off off air um, before you joined us, Grant, and I, and I was saying that normally I'm the guy that people seek out to be Santa Claus because I'm, you know, tall and big and jolly, and but I feel like. You are bigger and jollier than I am, so I'm going to well, seed the Santa Claus role <laughs> to you. You get to be Card Talk Santa Claus. Well, I thank you for that title, but I am definitely not more jo jolly than you. <laughs> You're pretty uh, maybe, jolly. <laughs> then you obviously don't know me very well. <laughs> I think we need to have both of you dress up in a Santa suit and do a who wore it better type situation. Who wore it better? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, but, well, obviously Grant does because you know here I am on on the YouTube. You can see me, and you can see what I look like. And so because Grant doesn't yeah, have video, you know, Grant wins. Winning. Yeah, no, Grant wins because everybody's seeing me. <laughs> like, oh, this is rough. Uh, <laughs> um, what anyways, we need to let's... do is get some card art of Grimby on with a Santa suit on, and there you go, you've got it. <laughs> yeah, right. Santa, Santa Bjorn, Grim Santa uh, yeah. the old, Saint, Saint, Saint Bjorn, Grim Claws the old. Oh yeah. wow! Well. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Grim Claw the old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ted, we, uh, we, Ted, get us back on track here. We uh we picked Bomber because he's uh well as his, uh, as his flavor text says Bomber is fattest and will do for two. He had better come alone and last. Gandalf, <laughs> a Hobbit, and that's uh that's precisely what he does. Uh, he was designed specifically. His character is large. His ability is that he's a fat dwarf, and that's what he does. <laughs> he just sits around and is fat all the time Uh, in the interest of full disclosure for anybody who is wondering out here more than once have i posted this picture um in the various social media platforms as a happy holidays because this is just probably by far and away just the happiest eating picture i've ever seen and you know at least in the united states i don't know how um the holidays are in the uk grant but you know i just feel like most of the holidays in the United States revolve around food and family and happiness. And this guy is like one of the foodiest, happiest <laughs> pictures in the yeah. in the card pool. Uh, I've got a full table. It's either like a turkey or chicken and there's grapes. It looks like a pint of beer, some bread I'm, probably. I'm, ce- I see. I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating here. Right? This it's is beast. My, I'm celebrating that. that. That picture could have just been taken for Thanksgiving. It could be Thanksgiving. It could be the Christmas goose. Who knows? Who knows? But anyways, yeah, but uh, um, let's let's actually talk about. <laughs> let's talk about Bomber. Let's talk yeah. about Bomber. Let's Ted, you're, about you're right Bomber, on. Baby. I mean, in the um, in the lore, he's just a fat guy, and uh, you know, I think the card perfectly represents him. And you know what? We're gonna use Bomber if we're gonna play. Um, a guy that can just take attacks and soak hit points. I mean, that's really what you're going to want him to do. You know, you're going to want to maybe bump bump up his defense, but he can he can take a, hill, a swing from the hill troll um, if you're playing Journey Along the Anduin. So, you know, that's not, that's not too shabby in terms of hit points and defense. But I'm not known in the community for playing dwarves, so what do you guys think? Well, I'll defer this to Ted scenes. I think he's going to have some controversial stuff to say. <laughs> sure. Uh, Bomber is, so he spits, he, he fits into, if he can fit, that is, into a very specific archetype. He, he's basically paired with one of, one of two heroes, if not both of them, right? Because his ability specifically affects two other abilities in the game. Which is when you're counting a dwarf character, you, you count the num- you count him as two, and that affects um, lore the lore hero Ori, which says when you have five dwarfs in play, you get to draw an extra card during the draw phase, and the uh, leadership hero Thorn Oakenshield, which says when you have five or more dwarfs in play, you get uh, an extra resource on Thorn Oakenshield. Um, you also you also forgot Ayn. When you control oh, five yeah, dwarves, oink. give Oin the tactics um, sphere. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Forgot about uh, forgot about Oin. So there's there's three heroes in the game, um, which he affects, and that's kind of it. Uh, just to clarify his ability, he, he doesn't count for two characters when exhausting him for any anything else. I think some players initially thought. Um, there's that leadership card that you exhaust dwarves to get resources. Uh, we are not idle. We're not idle says you exhaust X number of dwarf characters to get uh, to draw a card and get resources based on the number of characters you exhaust. And he, just to clarify, he doesn't count for two characters when you do that, even though 
I, I, let's be honest. I think he should <laughs> give him <laughs> up the boost that he needs. Um, but it's really just when paired with those other three heroes. And uh, the, the effect is helpful because if you are running Bomber and Ori and any other dwarf character, could be Thorn, you, you have four dwarfs in play to start the game. Which meaning on first turn, if you play a single dwarf, you will have five dwarfs in play for the following turn uh, for Thorn and Ori. And then Oin's ability would go off immediately. He would get that attack bonus in the tactics icon. Uh, so he's a bit limited in that capacity, but it sure is fun and very handy to have it. Grant, where are you going with Bomber? I actually... As much as it may seem strange, I actually like Bomber as a hero. His overall stats, other than his hit points, aren't exactly great. But having used him inside and outside of a five dwarf deck, like where you need to get like where you're focusing on like getting controlling at least five dwarfs he's actually very well suited you put a um armor of erebor on there with say a self-preservation and he's able to defend across the board and heal up three hit points per round two to three hit points around he can start taking tax all day um and um, me and Samuel Shreve actually had a couple of decks built in um, either his progression series or um, the Eleanor campaign. I cannot remember which one it was, where we actually used um, Bomba with um, oh, Dory, Hero Dory, to boost, um, <laughs> boost, boost Bomba's defense. Yeah. And it worked actually re really well on top of giving Bomber, like, say, a burning brand to cancel shadow effects. So he's actually quite a nice dwarf, those cooler hit points. I mean, personally, I would probably have taken that extra attack away from him and made him a, three, a zero, zero, 003 defender with five hit points. But tomato tomato <laughs> yeah but it looked weird <laughs> yeah i mean i think that eight threat in lore i mean that's it's... that's pretty good and it's a pretty reasonable yeah, low starting threat yeah he's got uh, really help. low stuff yeah low start and threat and being able to cap if you are running for the that dwarven like the five dwarf theme um he's ideal um let me it, let me ask this question because I mean I've played some dwarves and I've done the um Matt and I Matt from the blog and I have done some stuff about the um you know with the uh with the Hobbit saga and and we we've played the five dwarf thing like how strong and necessary is the five dwarf thing like is i mean i don't think it's relatively strong now um compared to what it used to be i mean you get nice little bonuses obviously the attack increase with oin the extra card draw with um ori is always Great. nice and that extra resource from thorin is brilliant but compared to say the dwarf mining archetype or just getting a load of um, dwarf it's characters. Spam on dwarf. The, yeah, yeah, the Dwarven Swarm for the Erebor Battlemaster that since got nerfed to, like, say, plus four, I think it is, total attack that the Battlemaster can have. Mm -hmm. um, it's not. Re it's just like an added perk to those if you've got, say, one of the heroes. Let me, let me ask another question. So what spheres... I always screw up Oin, Oin and... You know all the all those dwarfs. So Bomber is lore, obviously, and Thorn yeah. is leadership. Yep. Oin is spirit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then is there 
Ori is um, also lore. lore. Also lore. <laughs> so you can't do the. F- There's no tactics five hero um, booster. You... Well, I'm saying that like if you're gonna run a bond of friendship and have five f- five dwarf heroes out to start, like you wouldn't be able to use all the ones that have the five right. dwarf bonus. You would have to pick, yeah. a, you'd have to pick a tactics hero. That's different uh, from that. That's what uh, recently gave Bomber kind of a, a cool trick to do is if you play the bond of friendship contract where you can run four heroes, he counts as two. So you actually start the game with five dwarfs in play. Uh, now, because you're limited to one hero from each sphere, you can't run Ori because they're, they're both lore, Bomber's lore. But you can run Thorin, and turn one, you get his extra resource. And then with Oin, turn one, he gets the attack bonus and can spend tactics resources. So then you have two heroes with tactics. Uh, so it's kind of a just a neat thing with him in Bond of Friendship where you start with five dwarves in play. Uh, I well, should we... also mention... Go ahead. What was that, Grant? Go uh, ahead, I'll... I okay. The uh the other the other side to his ability is there are a couple of unique dwarf allies that also have an effect when you control five or more characters, five or more dwarf characters specifically. And there's uh Ally Gloin, Ally Biffer, and Ally Dwalin. And they all have different effects based on when you have five characters in play. So he would count towards those as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so back to my original question: Are you doing mm-hmm. that as something more than just novelty, or are you, you know, or does it just kind of stay kind of a novelty, and it's like, oh, look what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, like because I mean, you're starting at thirty-six threat, right? Thirty-seven threat, eight plus twelve doing the- plus. Yeah, if you're doing the five, if you're doing the the bond of friendship thing, your your threat's going to be up there, uh, you know, thirty, yeah, thirty six, thirty seven, uh, depending on your other other well, heroes. And your tactics choice, right? Yeah, but the lowest is going to be nine, I think. You've right. got two nine threat dwarfs that are tactics. Right. But um, even outside of that, though, the the effects are powerful. Just to pair him, I I played him quite a few times, and. I usually will pair him with an attacker like Gimli and then an Ori. And then you have four dwarfs in play. And that, you know, just giving the extra card draw off Ori sooner really helps. Or if you if you lose, you know, allies come and go all the time. If if they get um, too much archery damage or you have to chump block with them. So he just helps keep your dwarf numbers up. <laughs> gotta gotta keep your dwarf numbers up. You gotta hit your holiday your holiday dwarf numbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, with COVID, the dwarves are falling fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who'd have thought? Two years in, we're still we're still talking about COVID, right? Yeah, it's the uh, it's the enchanted stream. It's the water that you drink and puts you under. I think that that's <laughs> super super thematic. That um, that uh, Bomber has zero willpower because I always imagine that it was because he's the one that passed out in the enchanted stream and they had to carry him in the, you know, and it was like, that's why he has zero willpower, you know, like, well, I, technically, I think it's more to do with the fact that his mind's always on food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's very, uh, uh, thematic and, and, and fitting, but he, um, he does make, as Grant pointed out, he definitely serves as a, as a good defender, and a lot of times he's a, he's a great target for uh, all the cards that Grant named, like Burning Brand, Ringmail, like those just boost his defense. And because he's a dwarf, he also has access to um, uh, forgetting names of cards these days. The uh, well equipped, the zero cost event yep. that lets you discard two cards. And I will run, I'll run self-preservation in my deck too, Grant. I, I play all the same cards with him. And a lot of times I'll play well-equipped and get any one of those cards for free. I've gotten yep. free self-preservation, free ring mail, f- free burning brand on him. And it's awesome. It just kind of gets him up and running uh, a little bit sooner, which is great yep. to, to be a sturdy defender for your dwarf lineup. Now, 
there is a guy in the community. His name is Big Foam Loaf. He's also a Marvel Champions mm-hmm. guy, and he. I remember Grant and I were invited to play. Maybe you were there, Ted. I was there. Uh, yeah, he has a Gray Wanderer Bomber deck. Now is that? I mean, he he was he was self described by him as you know kind of tongue in cheek, but he was like, it's it's not so bad. Now is that a reasonable with eight starting threat? And the ability to pull out non-unique, you know, cards of any sphere. There's a lot of dwarf cards. Is that a reasonable deck to build? What do you guys think? It was uh, very fun and entertaining to watch him play it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably not a deck that... Um, it would be a deck that definitely needed a lot of fine-tuning if I was to build it. Um, because there are so many cards... And generally, I think I might, if I was to build it, I'd probably be sitting at 60 cards before I even started refining it down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I feel like, it was... I, I feel like in that deck, there's like, you have to, Bomber doesn't have the right traits to get a lot of the stuff that he needs, right? He's a dwarf, but, you know, it would be nice for him to be a warrior, but he doesn't get any of the things that warriors get, so he can't get, you know, um, raiment of war for example so you have to give him the warrior trait then give him raiment of war you know i don't think he can have the hauberk right so you know because yeah, the hauberk, not warrior yeah tail. yeah I, you another know, like, trait just, would really help him right agreed and that's the and that's the weird thing like i think that in order to build that deck he needs another trait and so maybe in the um and it's obviously not going to be a uh, solo deck because you won't have any willpower. But if you go out in, in maybe in the first year <laughs> with your one cost card, maybe you go get the trait card and you're like, okay, now he's a you know diligent warrior, or <laughs> diligent noble, or I don't know, whatever. You could get, a, it's Mighty Warrior. Mighty Warrior, right? right. You could Grey Wander and start with that in play, and then you can equip, yeah, Raymond and whatever else you want. Right. You, you could make him Gondor traded, and then he gets plus two defense off of, uh, you know, Gondor shield. Right. Things like that. Yeah. I mean, there's ways to go about doing mm-hmm. that stuff, but I feel like, like Grant said, I agree with Grant. Like, it just takes a little bit of doing and maybe a lot of fine tuning to do that. Yeah, what, but that's definitely companion decks that can pick up the slack. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's definitely a multiplayer option. That's why it was so interesting when when uh, when Big Foam Loaf did that. Big Foam Loaf, if you're listening, shout out to you for giving it a shot. Yeah, it, no, it was great. <laughs> so it was fun definitely to see. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> but the but the uh, neat thing the... about Bomber and you guys, we've talked about this a lot of times on the show. Like, you need somebody who can defend right out the rip, and you know, sometimes you don't think about Bomber as being a good defender. Two defense is not a lot, but five hit points is a lot in this game. There's not very many yeah. things that have more than five hit points in this game. Actually, there's only one thing that has more than five. Well, two, right? One, two. Bjorn has six. But, you know, like, I mean. And the Bjorn hero. So Bjorn, yeah, him. ten, right. But it's just, you know, Bomber is can be a reasonable defender, although I don't love, you know, using hit points to defend as opposed to defense to defend but you know well that's what i was saying personally i would right. probably if i was designing the card i would have probably taken that attack point and merged it into his defense so he's then you've got a three five he's got nothing for other stats but right. at least he's a good solid defender i think there's only one hero in the game that has two zero stats two stats that are zero you guys know which hero that is that would be galadriel Galadriel, right? Yep. I think. Yeah, I, I don't um, think any other hero has. Yeah, has two. There are heroes that that have zero and other. Yeah, zero uh, is a common. Uh, it's not horribly common, but it's common well, enough. Well, it's common in willpower. It's less common to have zero attack or defense, but there's right. a lot of zero willpower. Right. Heroes. Even like Baragon has one attack, right? <laughs> right. And so, well, where else does this guy fit? Does he a splash hero for eight willpower or for eight I mean, threat in in lore? Does he give you? Lord, I mean something. For, well, for me personally, I say with the five hit points and two defense, yeah, he's a splash. Uh, 
he fits better with dwarf, like the dwarf theme. But of course, I've splashed him in a couple of times just to soak art through. He can, I guess it's quest. A lot of these things are quest specific, right? So archery soak is definitely, you know, if you're getting killed in Escape from Umbar or some of those, you know, heart, archery heavy heavy quests. That's good. Ted, it's what like, do you? Oh, go ahead, Grant. Um, for eight threat, I mean, there's not much in law that can beat out the eight threat other than say Pippin or Falco. Um, yeah, I mean, that eight the... threat with that defense is really yeah. nice. You know, you're not getting that defense mm-hmm. out of Falco, Pippin, you know, Biffer, uh, Bilbo, you know, like... The, the, <laughs> the closest contender you're getting is maybe Denethor, because he's got three defense and three hit points for eight, as right. far as, a, like, a suitable defender. Right. Yeah. Um, and he can equip and... a Kondorian shield right away, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um... But like I was saying, he is a bit of a splash. You don't actually have to do that much work around him to make him viable. Give him, say, a burning brand, put a burning brand in for him and give him a self-preservation. He can defend most hits and heal up. You don't actually need to give him, say, a ton of attachments to boost his defense that way. Just give him a burning brand to cancel shadows and a way of healing, which Law has access to. I know. Yeah, if you got you say this but you got, the thing that I always have a problem with and this is not just you Grant is that that's true for any hero though <laughs> like you put a burning brand in a way to heal on him then most everybody's a decent well, healer or well, decent, I'm saying a it, decent defender you know like yeah for, for splashing for a threat it's ideal you don't have to waste sure. too many cards right. to make them actually viable right whereas if you are using Pippin You'd have to boost his defense. You'd then have to give him a burning brand. Right. And then you'd have to find boost a way his to hit boost his hit with points with spare pipe or yeah, 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 yeah. It's a pain in the neck. I get, I get. It. You're starting. You're starting better off than you are with other heroes, I guess. If, yeah, if you want a you defender. Know, as you mentioned, Dave. Yeah, it, he just he kind of by himself. He's good for. He can safely defend. You know relatively big attacks with nothing and every attachment you he has access to good attachments like he he can wield the burning brand right which not all defenders can right right because he because he is lore and all the healing stuff as you guys mentioned it's all in sphere you know aorith warden of healing those are all in sphere for him so it's a little easier because he has access to those cards by nature by just he's not knowledgeable in both bread and turkey bread and, and ale and ale i was gonna say that's what i was gonna say maybe it's not a turkey i think we need to take a poll and figure out what we th- and see what it's people think like it is tur- turkey chicken or goose like yeah. which of the poultry <laughs> which poultry thing it is grant what do you it's think it is <laughs> pheasant it could be pheasant <laughs> quail it could be pheasant <laughs> quail <laughs> I, it's too big to be quail. Yeah, yeah it I is. Think I think it's too big for one of those smaller game birds. Yeah, but <laughs> it's a cornichon. <laughs> Wait, is that? Oh, corn cornichon is a pickle. I'm thinking of Cornish game hen. Cornish game hen, which is like a pigeon, right? What's pigeon? There's a. I don't know. Anyways, I got nothing. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> some some foodie and Lord of the Rings. Fanel will let me know. Yeah. There's a uh, squab. That's what it is. Squab is pigeon, but they call it squab because if you knew you were eating pigeon, you wouldn't actually ever eat it. <laughs> so they're like oh. squab. Um, call it squab. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Uh, well, I would say let's talk about the art, but I feel like we've been talking about the art throughout the whole episode. So it's like, pretty pretty much. Yeah, yeah his art is just what you expect them to be doing. He is, you know, it is sort of young bomber. Uh, the only thing we didn't mention is whether he contends. Sometimes we talk about whether the hero contends with their ally version or not. And they do such totally, completely right. different things. Right. <laughs> you could have bomber and domber and not have to worry about them. They seem to not overlap, really. Uh, yeah, the, his ally version specifically targets underground locations, which are going to be very scenario scenario specific um and 
yeah, so you have some conflict there if you want to play Bomber and then, you know, play quests that have underground locations when do a thematic playthrough. Uh, both can be useful, but um, yeah, he's he's just kind of a fun, kind of a cheeky hero, but he's won some games for me. Well, should we ring this guy? I think so. Okay. We... Yes. Yes, Grant. Or yes, Ted. Uh, should we cr- kringle this guy? Should we cring, kringle, kringle this guy? Yeah. I'm thinking of let's other. Just, let's just wrap him up, put him in a gift, and then we can send him on his way. We will make a parting <laughs> gift out of Bomba. <laughs> You know, when I edit this, I'm going to have to worry about whether I'm going to show the parting gift card because you're mentioning parting gifts. So, <laughs> But we'll see what happens. Anyways, for anybody who doesn't know or may be unfamiliar with the podcast, uh, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary scale where we rank a card on a, on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 is the one card to rule them all or one of the best cards in the game, and 10 is the card that we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it came. So, Grant, you're a you're a bomber lover. You get to go first. Okay, I'm going to rate him a five. He's nice. I don't put him in every deck, but I do like the fact that he's there and he's won quite a few games for us. And he's it's always fun to have him on the table. Okay. And his artwork's fantastic. It reminds us of myself <laughs> sitting down for dinner. <laughs> if you had a beard that good, I would be excited about that i'm getting that way i know getting I, that way. <laughs> i've seen ready teddy i'm gonna give him a i'm gonna give him a six because he's a little more uh niche that his ability is just so narrowed down to counting dwarf characters and it really only affects the the allies and heroes that we mentioned but he he performs he, he fills a role in your hero lineup he fills the role of defender somewhat reasonably and his trait like dwarf is it's a it's a strong trait he's got especially some of the newer dwarf cards like the uh, airborne armor right to give him plus one and sentinel you know now he's three and five in sentinel that's uh that that'll do that'll, that'll do and he's got the access to healing like we mentioned so yeah, he's he's fun to play, and uh, his best pairing too, I, th- I think, is Ori, because Ori's also in Sphere, and then he's sort of helping you facilitate Ori's card draw. He's he's a part of that engine in a way, if you want him to be, uh, which then he's just helping you get more cards. So uh, very good and, and and very fun. Not you know top tier powerful hero, but super fun to play and really great for the archetype. <laughs> I think I have to give him a seven. I was going to say an eight, but then just for the theme, I think that this guy is probably the cheekiest of the um, abilities of the passive abilities that exists out of all the, maybe all of the cards in the card pool, but definitely of all the heroes. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it definitely gives you some effect in the game. So with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a seven as being primarily solo. I just am not really drawn to using Bomber all the time. Um, I'm not really drawn to using Dwarves all the time, and then Bomber definitely ends up um, kind of taking a back seat in that case, despite all the things that uh, Grant and Ted have said about what he can handle and what he can do. So that's where I'm going to fall. So that concludes uh, another year of card talk. We finish the 2021 year off with Bomber, and I am glad, boys, that we've made it one more year. Uh, we did. We did, thankfully. Wasn't sure how this year was going to pan out. And <laughs> where things were shaping up. But, uh, well, with yeah, the another... pandemic, what do you expect? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, but we did it. Did it, boys. 
<laughs> so thank you to our patrons who helped keep us warm this winter for all their support. <laughs> Yep, I agree. So everybody, join us again as we talk about more cards in the game. Have a great year. Do you love the content? Here's what you can do to stay connected. Become a patron. The money collected through Patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast. We love our patrons and you can join at many different levels. Visit patreon.com slash cardtalk2018. You can subscribe to us whether you're watching our YouTube channel or you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk L O T R L C G on YouTube. And there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.